a new mailbag arrived. Pretty full. Grüß you YouTubers. Here is the guy with a Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Voice recognition module. Quite a big chip and huge capacitors here and a few two-point wires. But the most important probably is the microphone. In the meantime, I found the listing. The price is $22, so it's not a cheap product, but uh, obviously it's not quite easy to do voice recognition. And at least we find a English documentation with all the different commands and so on, and also an Arduino sketch I found somewhere. Here you have the information, and then maybe we try it out once uh, in a different video. The next one. This is, I think, from Banggood. Two quite interesting things. Oh. An Arduino Mega. The form factor is a Mega. If we look closely, it is a Wi Fi sign here and a UFL connector here. And this small chip has the Espressive logo on it. It's an ESP8266. So this is a Wi Fi enabled Mega. I think an interesting concept if we need a Mega and Wi-Fi. And one of the examples that I had in mind was this RF Link project where I hacked my weather sensor. The RF Link only worked with an, with an Arduino Mega and I wanted to have it connected to my MQTT broker. So that would have been a perfect fit. I saw this. I did not know that it exists, but uh, it's a nice addition for my Arduino drawer. And here we have a dip switch, which enables us to select the different connections, like the AT Mega to the ESP, or USB to AT Mega to program the sketch, or USB to AD266 to upgrade the firmware, or the sketch on the ESP and so on. And I think this one is probably the right one where you can program the AT Mega and the AT Mega can communicate with the ESP8266 like that. I suppose that I will put an AT command sketch on the ESP that I can use it from the AT Mega uh, easily with an AT sketch. That is probably a good idea uh, for this concept. Some screws here, plastic screws, pay attention that I don't lose them. Now this is a ordinary PCB, nothing special. But together with the Raspberry Pi Zero and this USB plug which was also supplied, we get something interesting. We can connect the Raspberry Pi to a normal USB connector because here it connects see it here this has to be removed and now if we move it like that we see here D plus and D minus and here ground and VCC so we have to solder it here to these test points which is not very complicated and then solder this USB connector here, which is also not very complicated. And now it's done. You hardly see it. If you do not know it, it looks like it was always like a USB enabled Raspberry Pi. And this is the standard one like that and the USB one. And it has really a USB connection. It's not only for power because it has also the D minus and the D plus. So for example, you can uh, make it bootable and so on the same as you would connect to both of these 
connectors here. $3.62 at Banggood. Next one comes from Hobby King from Belgium. And I opened it already. And batteries. Why do I get batteries from Hobby King? Because I trust these batteries from Hobby King more than I trust the batteries from uh, China Direct from AliExpress. Here I am pretty much sure that they are okay because they specialized in batteries since a very long time. And this is why I buy my batteries at Hobby King. They replace, for example, this one, which is completely blown up and also uh, it does not work anymore. This is now a typical AliExpress battery. I don't like them too much. Next one is already opened, so I do not need the knife. Oh, only a, a shiny sensor. MH C19B. 0 to 5,000 ppm, parts per million. So, what is this? It has a PWM signal as an output. So let's check. It is a CO, carbon dioxide gas sensor. And why do I have such a gas sensor? Because a viewer wrote me that he wants to use this CO2 sensor to find out if somebody is in a room. Because as everybody knows, humans exhaust CO2. And if we have many um, humans in a room, the CO2 content should be higher. An interesting concept, probably not as fast as a PIR sensor, but anyway, an interesting concept. Next one is a small one. It has a hole here in the middle and this could be temperature sensor, but it is not. It is a pressure sensor. And this is part of my beer brewing stuff. Maybe I thought if I'm not able to do it with a tire pressure monitoring system, like that, I still have a proper pressure sensor which can be interfaced with an Arduino or with a ESP. It is an MPX 5999D and uh, it costs around $10 including shipping. So it's also not cheap. It is same, uh, more or less the same price as uh, one of these fully integrated TPMS sensors so if these TPMS sensors work, it's probably the better deal than this one. This is just a backup for me. Here I got the big packet and it's not from China, obviously. It is from the United States of America. Ah. Uh -huh. Viewers might know what this is. A blast from the past. A hand tool for wire wrapping, I assume, or for wire stripping, more for wire stripping, I think. And this is a motorized wire wrapping tool. For the modified wrap. Now one thing is it's 120 volt and here we have 240 volt but fortunately I have uh, something to still make it run. And here even a little bit of wire wrap wire. Original wire wrap wire I remember we had these cases for the wires and I assume this is maybe 
no, it's no, no production year, but it's made in the USA in New York. And uh, I assume that this is uh, from the 70s or from the 80s, probably. Now I got my variable transformer out and it is roughly 120 volt. And now something you don't you shouldn't show to your children. Here is live wire, so I know what I do in general. And uh, but it's dangerous, but let's check it. It still works. In the meantime, I also got two rows of headers with uh, wire wrapping um, legs. It works similar to the hand tool. We insert the wire and then we wrap it. <laughs> Fast! And the wrap is perfect. You get it also by hand like that, but uh, for sure not everyone and for sure not the, the speed. You can imagine that Mr. De Luca was happy to have such a tool instead of a hand wiring tool. And now I'm glad I have it here. This is really probably one of the oldest equipments here in my, in my lab. I have to find a better solution for uh, a little bit safer solution for the 120 to 240 volt uh, connector. It will have a nice place here in this lab. Thank you very much for sending me this tool. And this is the other cool tool I got. It's also from OK Industries, the ST130. And it's a wire stripper and cutter. This blade is the stripper and this one is the cutter. Now first we just put it in like that and, and we stripped it at the right length. Now if you want to cut the wire we decide which length. We cut it here and strip it and it's done. So we have a nice wire wrapping wire. Done. The next one, a second one on top of the first one and also done. This is really much more productive than the manual stuff. OK Industries did not survive. They were bought obviously by Jomar Industry Corporation, which is also somewhere in New York State at least. Maybe you still get these tools. I'm not sure. I did not find it. So this is really uh, something which is from the past. I'm glad that I have viewers like that who support this channel. So I, I was able to show the young people which tools we used in the 70s and in the 80s. And from what I read in the comments, telecom industry seemed to use it up till now. This is not a normal package. It is for mailbag and it comes from Canada. So let's open. Thanks for the great YouTube channel. Keep up the great work. <laughs> Banana rulers. And this is the logo of Dion. I think it's, uh, he calls himself Jon because it's written J-O-N and not like John. But I'm not sure. I'm not Canadian. And if we search banana rulers, we really get it. And we see that it was on Twitter. And here is Jan's trademark and the banana rulers. And here you see why he, he did this. 
and there were quite some discussions because of these banana rulers. So I have now a big one and a smaller one. Thank you, Jan, for your contribution. Next one is quite big. And well packaged. It's a sensor kit for P Raspberry Pi, I, uh, I assume. From Sun Founder, this is sent to me free of charge. Just to be clear. Open source electronics, make it easy and make it fun. That's how it should be. And a nice booklet, oh, with many colored pictures, lots of lessons, 31 lessons. Definitely for the Raspberry Pi, because here is the, here is the connection board for the GPIOs and the 40 pin cable. And plenty of stuff here, different sensors, all with these growth connectors, which are quite handy because you cannot do something wrong. VCC is also at VCC and ground is, also, is always at ground. For beginners, this is maybe an advantage. Huh? Sometimes also for experienced guys. Oh, <laughs> it's really a lot of stuff here. An, an IR controller, a small breadboard, a relay, plenty of stuff. You just need a Raspberry Pi, I assume. So uh, they explain many things around the Raspberry Pi, for example, also the PuTTY configuration and so on. And they have code examples in Python. And in C, here is C and here is Python. And you can even use their visual programming language called Dragit. I don't know, but it's uh, blo like Blockly or whatever with blocks here. And you have to go to their homepage. And also there you find uh, the repository for all the different programs. Always also the diagram of the sensors. So you find this also on AliExpress and it is $88 and I assume plus the Raspberry Pi it's in $128. But the kit I have here is $88, it's not cheap. If you look at the whole offering for a, for a beginner, this is really would be a nice, uh, a nice starter kit for somebody who really doesn't know too much about uh, the Raspberry Pi and wants to, to get some easy and safe uh, first steps here. This is all I wanted to show you today. I still have plenty in the mailbag and it will appear in a later video. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.